Every word should mean exactly what you intend. This is so easy to say and so hard to do. So how do you do this? When you're writing, you need to make sure every word you cannot cut. Can you cut some words? If you can, then you're saying too much. Try not to be informal. Informal meaning try not to write your research writing like you talk or like you write an email. In fact, you want to be much clearer than that and very formal. Don't use words like feel, think, believe. You want to be much clearer than these words are. Articles by psychologists like Skinner and Watson. So here we've got this problem with the word like. What does that like mean? The correct way would be to say articles by psychiatrists such as. Because this like, could this mean they like as in they prefer? Or does it mean similar like? Of course for me, I would even go further and I would not write this at all. And I would just say Skinner and Watson. If you have other articles that are similar, then you should just go ahead and cite them. So you can cut this, if it was me writing this, I would cut it down just to be very, very clear and concise. Avoid colloquial expressions, that is, uh, things like slang and words that people don't understand or are commonly used in spoken language. Wonderful, great, almost, normally, new. I think these are a good lesson. What does new mean? If you write new in your research paper, the person who's reading it is going to really be stuck. What in the world does new mean? Does new mean five years, two years, one year? What does it mean? Wonderful. What does wonderful mean? It means a little bit good, a lot good, very good, great. It is great. How big is great? You know, so I think you get the point. Avoid approximations. That is, don't say things that are unclear in their size and measurement. So for example, uh, quite a large part. Why not just say a part or say how much the part is? One third, two thirds, one half, 30%. Instead of this large or even worse, quite large. I don't know what either of those mean. Practically all. Does that mean 90%, 95%, 99%? We don't know. Very few. What does that mean? Under 10%, under 5%? Just don't know. Make each pronoun obvious, as we've mentioned already. This, that, these, those. Make sure that's easy for the reader to know. What is this? What is that? What are these? What are those? Try not to use third person and anthropomorphism and the use of we. So for example, third person. You want to avoid ambiguity, that is being unclear. Use a personal pronoun rather than the third person when describing the steps in your research or in your experiment. For example, we review the literature. If we is the, are the people who did the research, that is not I, more than two people like me and myself and one other professor, then that would be we. And here it's very nice and clear. You can see that when we write it this way, I can see we, that means the authors of this research. They did it. That's much better than saying the authors reviewed the literature because this is a third person. It's not the people who are writing it. Now, of course, it's the same idea, isn't it? We are the authors. But by writing we, it makes it much more active and direct, easier to read, and doesn't waste so much space. Avoid attributing human characteristics or animals uh, to animals or objects. And this here, let's see if I can get the previous piece out. This is called, uh, has a special name in English, anthropomorphism. <laughs> Anthropomorphism. Can you say that? Say that word. Anthropomorphism. I love that word. It's really great. What does anthropomorphism mean? It means that you use words that make things sound like they are human. Of course, we watch movies all the time and things are like humans. But in our research, we want to avoid that very carefully. So, for example, 
Pairs of rats or cage mates here were allowed to forage together. So it's very clear what we're talking about, a pair of rats. Another way to say this that would not be so good were, would be rat couples. Rat couples. Now why is that bad? Because here we say a pair of rats. Pairs. Pairs does mean two. But couples, what does couples mean? Couples also means two. But couples means two humans, right? So when you get married, you're a couple. Uh, if you're a boyfriend and a girlfriend, we could say you're a couple. So couples, in this case, kind of makes it sound like they are humans, and they are not. They are rats. The staff for the community program was persuaded to allow five of the observers to become tutors. That's correct. Incorrect. The community program was persuaded to allow five of the observers to become tutors. Now, let's look at this together a little bit carefully because it's a great example. The staff, the staff for the community program. So, this community program is some kind of organization, some kind of group, like a company or like a club or like a, a, a center. And here we can see the community program here. So it's the same thing, right? Community program, community program. But here we are very clear. The staff that works in this community program, this staff did something. But in the incorrect sentence, we're saying the community program did something. So. The community program is like a company, like an organization. But you know what? Organizations and companies are not people. So when you say that the company did something, this is a problem. It is anthropomorphism because you're making a thing sound like a human. A community program cannot do something. And a company cannot do something. Only people inside the company can do something. So to keep things clear for clarity, restrict your use of we to refer only to yourself and your co-authors. Use I if you are the only author of the paper. Now I understand that for some professors, they would prefer you do not use I and we inside of your thesis. If that's what your professor wants, that's what you should follow. Never do something that your professor says don't do and try to say, oh, Professor Warden told me I should do that. Now, of course, you should follow the rules of your professor, of your department, of your school, of the journal you're sending to. However, for APA, the guideline is that if no one else told you what to do, you should try to be clear. If in the research you did something, then you say, I did something. If you are more than one researcher, like two or three, then you should say, we did something. Uses of we may leave your readers wondering, who are you, to whom you are referring, who do you mean? So when you say we, the readers thinking we means the people who wrote the paper. But if it's only one author, then they get confused. Substitute an appropriate noun to clarify your usage. If you mean that you did something, but the authors are two authors, but not both authors did it, then maybe you need to clarify. So for example, you could say, the lead author of this research did something, or the second author of this research did something. You can be very clear that way. Okay, now we're gonna move on to a topic which is very important, and again, there's no super clear rule about this, but the idea is to make your writing easy for people to read and not be offended. And that's bias in language. How do we avoid bias? That means saying things that make us sound like we're against someone or we're for someone or we support something. So how do we avoid that? You need to be specific. For example, Asian Americans or Hispanic American. So Asian American or Hispanic American is very general. But if we say Chinese Americans or Mexican Americans, that is more specific. So Hispanic or Mexican 
Asian American or Chinese American. What's the difference? The correct examples are more specific. When we talk about sexual orientation or gender, this is a very fashionable topic that I think is very important to help us be fair to everyone. Sometimes it can become a little bit confusing. So we have different groups that have different preferences and they have different labels or names. So what do you do? You should spend a little bit of time to find out what is it that that group prefers? What do they like to be called? What's their official name or label that they prefer? Of course, you don't want to label people in super general ways. You don't want to give them a label and just say uh, everyone fits into this label. For example, autistic, neurotic, wheelchair bound. People in a wheelchair, do you want to call them wheelchair bound? Or confined to a wheelchair people? AIDS victims, brain damaged people, short people, tall people, smart people, stupid people? Is that the way you want to say things? I think not, especially in our research writing. We want to try to be as specific and clear and fair as possible. And that means understanding how that group labels themselves and trying to focus down, not to be a huge group, but a very specific group. And uh, our research should be very focused. So the more focused and specific, the better. When we talk about age, we should be very clear. We should not just say girls, boys, young, old, men, women, Generation X, hipsters. We should not be saying these kinds of words. Rather, we should be very clear. If we say girl, wouldn't it be better to say a female of 12 years old? If we're saying old, wouldn't it be better to say a male of 65 years old. So you avoid these ideas totally. Generation X or Generation Z or whatever. You would be saying something like uh, the respondents born after the year 2005 and before the year 2015. So you'd be very clear. When you talk about history, you should also be very specific. And this is one of the big mistakes I see many research writers make. They say things like long ago, recently, modern, up to now, these days. Oh, I wrote these days twice because <laughs> a lot of people say these days, so that really deserves a special, special observation. You want to make sure you avoid all these kinds of generalizations. Many students will begin their writing by saying something is modern or something is new. And I think we need to be very clear. Number one, what do you mean by modern or new? Beginning in what date? And number two, when you say modern or when you say new, it kind of infers that it's never ever happened before. And are you really sure that that's the case? Have you really checked the history? I'm not sure you have. So you should really be very clear. You don't want to say something like, nowadays everyone does something. Nowadays, everyone uses their cell phone to text online. Well, nowadays, when I read your paper, I don't know what that means because I may read your paper one year later, two years later. And what does that mean as far as history? Didn't people use other software before? And was it totally different or a little bit the same? It's complicated. So rather than using these kinds of words, we're going to try to be very clear. OK, that's all for the general topic. And next we're going to go into a series of examples.